gamers, Bill Cavalier, the Dungeon Bastard here, and I have a very special coaching session today with Edda the Barbarian from Standard Action. Now, Edda, you've come to me because I'm a superlative gamer, I'm a professional adventure coach, and I am the Dungeon Bastard. I'm going to be honest, I need you to be completely honest with me here today, okay? This is the Dungeon Dojo. This is a safe space. So if any feelings come up, if you feel the need to share something personal, important, if you feel the sudden impending urge to enter Barbarian Rage, that's okay. You can do that here. Okay, Edda? So don't stifle those feelings. Are you ready for a session of hardcore adventure coaching? Yeah. Oh, this is great. I never get to talk to anybody about this stuff. Nobody ever wants to talk to me about being a barbarian. I appreciate it. Let's be honest. We are not known for our eloquence or our scintillating dialogue. Well, this is your opportunity to prove all those haters wrong. Let me prepare for some hardcore adventure coaching. All right. <laughs> oh, man. I'm so excited. I don't know about eloquence, though. I'm not really into that. I wonder what's taking him so long. Hey! All right. Whoa. <laughs> I want a hat like yours. <laughs> you know, if you reach 12th level, you may be able to receive one of these. 12th? 12th level. The bar is high. All right, so... Let's begin. Edda, I'm just going to I'm going to pose some questions. I want you to talk. I'm going to listen, okay? Let's begin with your character class. You are an elven barbarian. It's an unorthodox choice. What made you choose this particular path as an elf? Well, you know, I tried a lot of things. Uh, you know, I guarded stuff for a while. I tried to learn how to do spell stuff because my mom wanted me to. But, you know, one day I just, I got really mad and I hit somebody and it felt really good, felt really right, you know. It felt like the way that I should be solving my problems. And I just thought, well, maybe this is the path that I should choose. And, yeah, I mean, my elf buddies didn't really think that was an awesome idea, but they're, you know, I, I, I think they'll turn around. <laughs> so you're saying that after centuries as a peace-loving, magic-studying uh, elf, you decided that maybe direct violence was actually the better answer. Yeah, I'm amazed that more people don't come around to this. <laughs> well, as a dungeon bastard, I have to say I applaud your enlightened viewpoint. It's a, it's a promising aspect of your personality. <laughs> um, so, that being said, I feel like you've made the right choice. You know, there's a lot of people in a lot worse shape out there that I've adventure coached. So, tell me about the rest of your party. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, so, um, we've got a, a sorceress. Um, she's, uh, she likes to cast like the evocation spells, but she doesn't do it very often. She tends to sort of make herself look really nice a lot of the time, which is cool, which is cool. Um, and then we've got um, the druid who uh, who likes to burn stuff, which is awesome, but then we don't actually have a cleric, so he's supposed to be the healer and he doesn't really do that, which means that I, you know, I bleed more than I probably should. Uh, mostly. And then, oh, we've got um, the half-halfling bard. Yeah, he's, uh, he tries real hard, you know? He, he really does. He's, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's fun. <laughs> yeah. Fun. That's well, not he... something that I've ever heard associated with a bard, but uh, if he can make it work, more power to him, I guess. Um... Look, I'm looking through the list here. Sorceress, druid, bard. I mean, it really appears to me that everybody else is a bunch of squishy, charisma-based classes. You know, how do you feel about being the most effective character in the party? Wow, no one's ever told me that before. 
Uh, well, you know, I, I kind of feel like they'll come around. <laughs> I They stop me from hitting things sometimes, but I think they're smarter than me, so that might be a better choice. I don't know. Uh, they stop you from hitting things. Yeah. Isn't that really your job as, as the barbarian? Isn't that your job to hit things? I guess. Yeah, I guess it might be. Yeah, no, I mean, they, they, they stop me all the time. They, they, they talk and stuff to the bad guys. With they, they interact with the NPCs. Yeah, yeah, they want to talk to them. They want to be friends with them and stuff. And I mean, we have, we've met, made some cool friends because of that. But I don't, I don't know if that's what we should be doing. All right, you know what? I want you to take this portion of our conversation. I want you to go home and journal about that. I know you're probably not literate. Just, you know, think out loud and maybe take your axe and bash it against a tree, uh, some rocks, small woodland animals if you can find them. You know? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, let's address this, this rest of the party issue because it's, it's really an area of concern. I'm not sure that you have problems, Edda. I think maybe they do. All right, so let's start with the bard. He's a, he's a half-halfling bard, correct? Yeah. <laughs> We're not yeah. really sure what the other half is. Why haven't you split his guts open with your battle axe and made a necklace from his highly charismatic, stinking entrails? Well, I, uh, I never really thought about that. I mean, he's all, he's, he cooks. He, he makes the food important. It's, it's important. Does he make some sort of stew out of the uh, desiccated remains of the uh, hobgoblins, goblins, and trolls that you've slaughtered, or is it really just sort of more standard kind of elvish fare? No offense. None taken. No. Uh, the druid is actually a vegetarian, so we mostly have vegetarian fare on the road. So, you know, a collection of roots. <laughs> the druid is a vegetarian. Why... Am I not surprised? Why am I not surprised? All right, let's talk about the Druid for the mint for a moment. Uh, just give me your honest, frank opinion here. The Druid, mostly worthless or completely worthless? That's a tough one. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go for mostly because he does, he's probably the only member of the party that, that kind of enjoys destruction, <laughs> which is nice. Uh, it's a change. <laughs> so you see a lot of fire seeds. Has he worked his way up to, like, a flame strike yet? Anything like that? No, no. Mostly, you know, uh, flaming spear kind of thing. All right. Well, you know, you can go to these people and tell them if you would just kill more monsters and gain more experience, one day he will be able to flame strike, right? <laughs> I told them this, and I don't think they believe me. I think they think that, like, working through the story of wherever it is that we're going is what's going to make them level up. But I don't think it's true. I'm glad that you agree with me on this one. Yeah, in my experience, that's not the way role-playing games work. Let's talk about the sorcerer. Um, okay, she has her charms. Uh, her wardrobe has a certain panache, as you pointed out. But uh, from what I can tell, she really seems to favor pulling out her hand crossbow instead of unleash unleashing fiery bolts of eldritch doom on your opponents. Have you ever considered, and I'm just making a suggestion here, have you ever considered accidentally snapping that dark elven joke of a missile weapon in two and letting her rely on her spells? Well, you know, Bill, I'd be lying if I said that I hadn't thought about that from time to time. But, you know, um, if it's what she wants to do, I feel I need to give her the space. I mean, the wizard buddies that I had back at home gave me the space to be a barbarian, sort of. Um, I would like her to get some training, though, in it. I think she might still be suffering the minus four. Right, right. Non-proficiency penalty. That's really, that's, I mean, you're just, your overall party makeup is completely suboptimal. I, I think, you know, you're in a unorthodox but correct kind of place, and the rest of the party just seems to be holding you back. I mean, do you feel like they get in the way of your God's given destiny of kicking ass? You know, I think they might. I think they might. 
you know, one day when I was, I was going to attack a very threatening merchant, very threatening, tall, you know, and Fernando just leapt out of the bushes and grabbed me and, and ruined my rage entirely, totally ruined it. The, the rounds used up on the ground while I was trying to, you know, get my head back in order. I, I think this might be something that I have to address with them. You know, another thing that I've noticed about uh, the way that your adventures have unfolded is, particularly in the last session, you were left in a complete cliffhanger of a game, right? How does that make you feel as a character in the DM's greater world where you've been the subject to this cheap, manipulative trick that just kind of leaves everybody just wondering what's going to happen next? Really angry. I'm, I'm really angry about that. You know, I worked really hard and I'm, I'm trying to find the big boss here and they're not letting me get to the boss so I can hit him or her or whoever it is. It's really frustrating. I mean, for most, for most of your adventures, you're promised to, to, to slay a dragon. At the end of the adventure, you don't get to slay the dragon. I mean, that's just bad DMing. That's bad form, in my opinion. Do you, do you feel like there's anything that you can do to help your DM become a better DM? You know, I was hearing about this, this thing the other day where, where there's this game that's going to go on at Gen Con where where the dungeon bastard is going to teach DMs that DMing is easy. And, and, and I think that they're, they're almost going to they're, they're gonna make the money for it, like right now, and it's going to happen, and I should send my DM to that game so that, that, that they can understand how frustrating it is. I'll tell you something, Edda. You send your DM to that game, I will personally put them in a chokehold until they kneel before the wisdom of the dungeon bastard. I'm willing to do that for you. Yes, yes, I love it. Oh. Fans, listen, Edda has been left in a terrible situation here. Her fate is in limbo. There's nothing worse than being a character with some sort of weird, open-ended, ambiguous plot. Right? What's going to happen next, we don't know. We need you fans out there to help Edda. She's already realized the wisdom of grabbing that great axe and kicking ass. But she needs her DM to be motivated. She needs her fellow party members to be motivated. And the only way that can happen is if you go to Kickstarter and you pledge your support for Standard Action Season 3. And then together, look, I'm a backer, you be a backer, and together we can right this horrible, horrible injustice. Edda, do you have anything to add? I think I need to go out and smash something right now! Right now! Ah! You know what? I feel a rage coming on myself.